Welcome to studentlearning.in, your e-learning buddy. Architecture of HDFS. This architecture is based on multiple parts like name node, data node, metadata, client. But there are many parts. Name node basically, name node is a kind of server. Server is basically deal of multiple clients or multiple data node. So name node that act as a master server in order to manage the file system file system namespace and provide the right access to the clients and then store metadata of actual data actual data means like file name path number of data blocks block ids block location number of replicas celebrated configurations manage files system namespaces regulate client access request for actual file data files that means name node basically arrange all the client access path between client to server and also the main responsibility of name node is assign work to slave slaves means is a data node so there is one name node in HDFS and there are a lot of data node in HDFS. And after that, execute file system namespace orientation like opening the file, closing the file, renaming the files and directories. And after that, name node keep metadata in memory of fast retrievals. That means it's, a, it's again main responsibility of name, um, name node to keep metadata in memory for fast retrieval. The huge amount of memory is required for its operation. This should be hosted on reliable data node work as slave in Hadoop cluster. That is a that is there is many responsibilities of data node in terms of name node. The first responsibility like it actually stores business data, and then this is actually worker node where read write data processing is handled. All kind of business data is stored in name node, so a huge amount of storage is required for its operation. Now I am going to explain the sdfs architecture in terms of diagram as you know that there are multiple parts of sdfs architectures like name node client rack metadata metadata operations so first their first point is name node second point is rack one and rack two rack one is divided into three shell first shell three 2 and 2 and rack 2 is divided into 2 shells first shell is 3 points and second shell is 4 points now you can see the diagrams in the replication process rack 1 and rack 2 are equal because the total number of blocks are same in case of rack 1 there are Three shells in case of rack two, there are two shells. Bus, but the blocks are same because this is the operation of replication. So this is a main concept of replications, and both are data nodes. And then rack one read the clients and client convert this process with the help of metadata operation to name node, and name node is linked to rack two and metadata metadata basically is a part of data inside data it's a description of data so it is the proper sdfs architecture in terms of block diagram now i am going to explain working of hdfs suppose there is a file and the file size is 200 mb and as per the working rule of hdfs the file processing size is 64 mb so the file is divided into four parts the first file is 64 mb second file is also 64 mb third is 64 mb and th last one is 4 mb 
because 200 MB is divided into four parts. Then this file is directly transferred to name node through client and the name node is directly attached to metadata. Suppose there are four files A, B, C, D. File A is a txt124. File B means text file 358. C text 567. D text 36 and 8. So in the, this diagram, there are eight data nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 and the data node is directly connect to client as well as name node name node name connect to name node with the help of block report and heartbeat now i am going to explain the concept of map reduce map reduce is divided into two parts first is map and second one is reduce map is basically based on key value pairs the reason is very clear in same of data sets there are multiple values but key is unique so map means it takes a set of data and converts it into another set of data where individual elements are broken into tuples tuples basically it's a row column arrangement procedure and second part is reduce reduce takes the output from map function as an input and combine those data tuples into a smaller set of tuples. Then now I am going to explain what is the uh, flow of map reduce functions. So there is a values, there is a input parameters. There are multiple values, multiple buses, multiple trains, multiple plane and multiple cars. There is an input box and again, the, sorry, the next step is this input box is converted into another three boxes on the basis of input. The first input box shows like car, train and bus and second one shows train, plane and car and third one shows bus, bus and plane. Now the first box is convert to three values like bus one car one train one and second input box again convert convert to is another box there is train one plane one car one and third input box is convert to another box that is bus two and car one the next step the next step is count total bus total car total plane in a single box like box one shows bus 2 and bus 1 box 2 shows car 1 and car 1 bus 3 shows train 1 and train 1 Bo box 4 shows plane 1 and plane 1 now i am going to explain the another paradigm like you can count all the buses like in first phase there are three buses second phase two cars third phase two train and fourth one to plane now this process is now convert to output output is basically is very clear that means there are three buses two train two two car and two plane so first step means it's a splitting second one is mapping third one intermediate splitting then reducing and then combining thank you so much for watching Please leave your questions in the comment section down below and do like, share and subscribe to Student Learning.